Hey everyone, it's Keith here. We're nearing the end of summer here in Australia, and in today's video, we're taking a look at some of my favorite summer gear. First up is something I've been testing recently, and it's the Alpaca Metro pouch. It's a fun little pouch made from black VX42 X pack. On the back, it has Velcro straps and a snap button loop for different carry options. You can attach it to a backpack strap or loop it through a belt. The pockets on my hiking pants are quite shallow, and sometimes my gear slides out. During the summer, I've been carrying the Metro pouch on my belt, and it's a great way to free up pocket space. This small pouch has just enough organization to store a few of my everyday essentials. There are two compartments on the Metro pouch. The front zippered compartment is quite spacious for bulkier items, and I usually keep my car keys in here. The main area in the main compartment is pretty narrow and has various pockets for organization. On one side, there are several card slots. On the other side, there are elastic loops and slots for small tools like a flashlight or knife. For my recent carry, I didn't use any of the organization and only crammed my gear in the main area. I stored my wallet at the bottom and stacked my earbuds on top. The Metro pouch works very well and I've enjoyed using it a lot lately on a few hikes. It's a fun pouch that is very functional and it's a great way to expand carry capacity. If you want to see a full review of the Alpaca Metro pouch, let me know in the comments. The next piece of gear is the Axwell wallet, which I've been testing recently. The Axwell wallet is pretty thick, and I generally prefer ultra slim wallets. But since I've been carrying the Alpaca Metro pouch, I'm not too concerned about the thickness. The design of the wallet is pretty straightforward. The cards are held together by two aluminium plates and an elastic loop. The Axwell wallet holds up to 12 cards with bills, and has a large finger groove to push out the cards. Sometimes the cards can be a little tricky and fiddly to take out because the elastic loops are very tight. The main highlight of this wallet is the interchangeable face plates which allow customization and modularity. Here I have the black and grey versions. The face plates are secured onto the base frame by magnets. I can swap the face plates to customize how the wallet looks. The original colorways look nice, but I prefer the contrasting plate and frame. The black plate on the grey frame is my favorite look out of the two. Another use case for interchangeable faceplates is modularity. Axwell has a few other accessories on its website such as a Chipolo tracker and multi-tool. The wallet comes with a cash strap and money clip which you can use to customize the wallet to fit your needs. These two additions weren't very useful because I don't carry any bills or cash. However, it's a great add-on if you can take advantage of them. I've been using the Axwell wallet for a couple months and I think it's a good wallet. It's fun and offers good customization and modularity. The main negative for me is the thickness. At the moment, the credit card size footprint makes up for it, but in the future, I'd love to see a slimmer version. My next summer favorite is the James Brand Ellis. I love the design and blacked out look of the tools and G10 handle. I brought it with me on my recent trip to Sydney and this multi-tool was super useful. The Ellis has a slip joint knife with Sandvik 12C27 blade steel. The factory edge was pretty slicey and the thumb hole cutout on the knife was very easy to open. The highlight of the Ellis for me isn't the knife, it's the pair of scissors. The action on the scissors feels snappy and solid. Comparing the scissors on the Ellis to the Swiss Army knife, the Ellis has a thumb rest with a bit of jimping, and the Swiss Army knife has a very subtle thumb ramp. Another big difference is the design. The spring tension on the Swiss Army knife can potentially bend and misalign. On the Ellis, the spring tension and mechanism feels rock solid, and I think there's less chance of it having issues. On my recent trip, I needed to cut several packages, and these scissors were very handy. Apart from the two primary tools, the Ellis has a scraper on the end that also works as a pry bar, screwdriver, and lanyard hole. Lastly, the Ellis has a simple wire pocket clip. Overall, I really like the James Brand Ellis, and I have to admit, it's quite expensive. I like the wide range of tools on the Swiss Army knife, but the scissors have always been a weak point, whereas the scissors on the Ellis are fantastic. Most of the time, I have plenty of knives around me, but once in a while, I prefer using scissors for extra precision. I think if I was to carry a multi-tool in my EDC, I think the Ellis seems to fit my needs the best. Another piece of gear I've enjoyed using this summer is the Pocketable Parker from Uniqlo. I love these jackets because they can fold into a small pack, and I've somehow lost the original pouch before this video. They are very travel friendly, and it's small enough that I can throw them into a sling or backpack without taking up too much space. The jacket is made from a very thin nylon material, which doesn't keep me very warm, but it's great for those slightly cooler or windy days during summer. 
Uniqlo advertises these jackets with water repellency for light rain, however it doesn't do a great job in my experience. I recently came across this YouTube channel called My Life Outdoors and it's becoming one of my favourite channels. Last year they shared a video taking a deep dive into DWR coatings and I highly recommend watching it. You can check out the video in the top info card. Back to this Uniqlo jacket, I quite like it even though I don't get a ton of use since it's very warm during summer. It's incredibly lightweight and I think having it in my bag just in case is better than not having it at all. Next up is the Alpaca Element cap. I've been outdoors pretty often and this hat is the perfect accessory. I love the matte finish on this cap and it's also waterproof. Another highlight of the cap is the Fidlock buckle for easy attachment. Once you've set the adjustment for the head size, the Fidlock buckle makes it easy to attach it to a bag or sling without losing its fit. One minor thing I don't like about this cap is the velcro adjustment. I'm not a fan of velcro adjustments because of the sound and feel. For my small head, the velcro adjustment is at its shortest length and there's only a small amount of velcro holding it together. I feel like this could potentially loosen and come undone over time. Besides the velcro potentially loosening over time, I really like the design and style of this cap. I've been struggling for a long time to find a cap that fits me and I think the Elements cap does a pretty good job. I think it might still be a bit too big for me. If you have any good hat recommendations for a small head, let me know in the comments. Another summer favourite are these neck gaiters I bought from Amazon Australia. These came in a pack of two, a black and a grey one for $12. The product listing says it's an ice silk material, but I don't really know what that is. It's a very stretchy and breathable material that feels very cool. There are plenty of ways to wear these, but I've mostly worn them around my neck to protect it from the sun during hikes. I've never used them before and they are surprisingly useful. Also, these take up practically no space in my bags and it's nice to keep one on hand just in case. If you want to grab these neck gaiters, check out the link in the description box. So I've just covered a lot of small bits of gear and for my next summer favourite, it's the Alpaca Bravo Sling Pro version 2, which I use to carry all of them. I brought this with me on the trip to Sydney and I appreciated the slightly larger 6 litre size. The extra room is super handy when I'm travelling and going on hikes. In the main compartment, I can fit a large water bottle, umbrella and the Uniqlo jacket I talked about before. If I'm out in the city, the main compartment can easily fit my Fujifilm X-T3 with a lens and a few accessories like SD cards and batteries. Besides the main compartment, it has other zippered compartments that can easily fit daily essentials like keys and a wallet. One thing that sets the Bravo Sling Pro V2 from other slings is the exterior material. It's made from an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene cut proof fabric that has a very high resistance to tearing. I've personally tested the material with a knife and it does work. I live in a pretty safe place so I'm not taking advantage of the cut proof material. If you live in an unsafe area, I would recommend checking out this sling. I've been using the Bravo sling since the first version and I still think it's one of the best all-rounder slings. There are other cool features I haven't mentioned like the USB charging pass-through and lockable strap. However, most slings on the market are quite slim and the slightly larger size of the Bravo sling is very handy if you carry any bulkier items like a water bottle, umbrella or even a mirrorless camera. If you want to see a long term review of the Alpaca Bravo slings, let me know in the comments. If you've been on the channel for a while, you might know that at the start of last year I bought a pair of Adidas Terex Free Hikers and was very impressed with them. However, my feet sometimes feel a bit toasty, especially during summer because the Gore-Tex lining wasn't very breathable. During the Black Friday sales, I wanted to grab another pair of Adidas Terex and I went with the Soulstride Trail Running Shoes. At the time, there weren't many reviews on the product listing, so I decided to give these a go. I love the design and style of these shoes. It looks like an ordinary pair of running shoes, but on the outsole, it has aggressive and deep lugs for extra grip and traction. I've worn these for a couple months and they're pretty comfortable, and I haven't experienced any hotspots. The Soulstride has an EVA midsole and I found it stiffer compared to the Boost outsoles on the Free Hikers. The Boost outsoles feel incredibly soft and it felt like walking on clouds. At half the cost of the Terex Free Hikers, I think the Soulstride is still pretty good. In terms of breathability, these have a mesh upper and it's very breathable. Since it lacks the Gore-Tex lining, I found the mesh upper traps less heat which is great for summer hikes. So far I'm pretty happy with these and I love the sleek look on them. 
If you can get them on sale, I think the Soul Stride is a good choice. And that pretty much wraps up my favourite summer gear and essentials. This summer has been extremely hot with a few rainy days, and the gear I've talked about has been very useful. And you'll probably find me with a slowdown when I'm outdoors or hiking. I'd love to know what your summer essential is. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy the video on the screen where I talk about my favourite winter gear and essentials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.